Right, welcome back to another Rust and Crust of Eruption. We're we'll doing a full time lapse build of Airfix's 172 steel Messerschmitt BF109 G6. The box art on this kit's really nice, as you can see. You've got three marking options. All the parts were wrapped in one bag, and the clear parts were wrapped in their own individual bag inside the larger bag. The instructions were the typical airfix type, which are always easy to follow and have a bit of history about the aircraft or subject at the start. There wasn't that many steps to this chip and it was pretty basic. You had all your warning labels as well. All the colour callouts were for Humbrol paints, although some do not exist. You got an Italian one. A German one, as you know, sorry, that's the Italian one, the other one was Swedish, I think, I'm not 100% sure on that at the moment, but uh, yeah, you got three different marking options, we're all really nice, unfortunately some of the paints didn't actually come up when you searched up on the Humbrol paint guide, the decals were extremely high quality as usual, printed by Cartograph. There weren't many of them though, and then you got the Airfix uh, leaflet telling you that you can join the club. Just try to open the bag. The clear part, as you can see, was individually wrapped. You got two choices of canopy. All the parts were really nicely moulded. The pan lines were a bit heavy. Here you can see the, the machine guns, the rocket pods, the bomb, the spinner, the seat and the wheel covers, and the pilot. He was nice, but I didn't use him as there wasn't really a detailed paint guide and I was having the plane look like with undercarriage down. The panel lining was slightly heavy um, and some rivet detail could have been added but none was included. And on the inside of the wheel wells was detail but the cockpit had none, it just had two holes for where the seat was to plug into. Here you can see the canopy was really clear, uh, there, was, there was no sort of um, distortion uh, when reading through it. Start by cutting out the fuselage halves and the spinner and the propeller parts and assembling them together. Clean them all up first of course so to get a bit of screw away. Use a small file to do this and some sandpaper. Then use Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting Cement to glue it all together. And also a wee bit of Rebel Contact for parts that needed more adhesion. Painted them all with a hand mixed dark grey colour. assembled the two fuselage halves together. Did use a bit of cyanoacrylates in some areas to make sure that there was a good bond between parts. And I used some closed pegs and some rubber bands to hold it together whilst drying. I 
applied a bit of handle filler along all the seam lines. There weren't any gaps, which was good. Then cut out the lower halves of the wing, lower and upper halves of the wings, and tidied them up. Use Tommy that uh, cement again to cement it together. Everything so far been a good fit, and then sanded down the fuselage and restriped the panel lines that had gone missing or been filled in. Then used Revel 09 Anthracite to paint the bottom of the cockpit floor as it would be darker here. Then I attached the rear stabilizers. I cutted out the drop tank and then assembled it together. And then assembled the rocket pods. Unfortunately, after a long cleanup process, these weren't really a good fit. As the sort of inside sort of spear type part, the boat reliever rocket was, didn't actually really fit. It was quite loose inside the the actual pod part and so it was really hard to glue together but I cleaned it up and stuff anyway so I thought I'd show you it. I then just went with the cannons under the wings I believe they were I assembled the bomb, however I messed it up slightly so I just put it with a drop tank instead. I drilled out the air intake for well, the air intake um, because it was a solid piece of plastic. I'd be hoping a new tool to have a hollowed out piece would have been much more realistic but it wasn't too much effort to do this. I then masked the canopy up using Tamiya 6mm masking tape. I used a cocktail stick to burnish the edges and held up to the light so I could see the edges nice and clearly when I was mastering up. The frames were all nicely defined on this canopy, weren't too thick or too fine. I then used tumble 32 for the just the top around the cockpit where the drum site would usually be, however there wasn't a drum site included. Humble 32 is a lighter colour than the dark grey I did use in the cockpit, given the effect of fake shadows. Then attached the drop tank. At this point I also stuck on the landing gear, however I didn't actually attach the wheels. I coated it with a coat of uh, Vallejo grey surface primer. And then pre shaded it with Tamiya XF1 and used that same, and then used Tamiya XF23 light blue for all the underside. Unfortunately, I didn't get all the paint in film due to technical issues, but I showed you, I'll show you this amount of paint in. I then used Tamiya masking tape to mask up where the yellow areas would be. I, do, I used tam, uh, extra acrylic R level 4 for this, as uh, extra acrylic do a nice range of RLM paints. Then airbrush the sod. All extra acrylic paints give a gloss finish. This does help without having to do it for detailing, but not always a gloss finish is desirable, so it means you have to flat varnish it. I did the mottling as well with this. This is really fun to do, but I found it quite tricky. And some areas needed touched up again, so I did that off camera. Uh, this was RLM 75 by Extra Acrylic. 
I didn't get RLMO4 uh, filmed. I I used also that dark grey, same dark grey colour for the camouflage. I and, and I painted the propeller Humble ninety one, then gloss varnished it using Revel number one aqua colour, and then I started detailing it. All the details went down really well. I used a micro set and sole to help them bed into the panel lines. There was only around 7 or 8 decals to draw onto the uh, actual plane, although there were 3 options included, so there was more decals than that. The option I went for um, was one that was flown in 1943. I also applied a chalk wash, which consisted of uh, weather and powders washing up liquid and water. I painted these all over the panel lines, then I used a cotton bud to wipe away the excess. I did some chipping with a sponge and some Revel Silver paint. And then matte varnished the entire model after the wheels had been attached. Did do a bit of some streaking from the fuel areas using weathering powders. I also did this from the gun ports and the exhausts. The exhausts I painted uh, Tamiya XF49. And yeah, so this was a really good kit. I'd recommend it for anybody. Apart from, if you're going to do the German stream, I'd recommend getting an airbrush to do that. A high quality one. Um, I'm happy with the result, apart from a wee bit of overspray. And here's it versus the old tool one, which was covered in rivets. Yeah, you look, there's the motlet on the old tool one. And that's the new one. I think, I'd say that's a vast improvement. It was done without an airbrush.